Hello every- oh, there we go. Uh, hello everyone and welcome back to Beacon Pines. Alright, let's see what these tubes are. Mining Operations Alpha. You guys have miner- have mines here? Not that I know of. This town is all farms and fertilizer. In a series of tubes. Pa always said you can only trust a miner up to the point where the, uh, when they hit gold. Not sure how that wisdom applies to this exact situation. That's the thing about Pa, you don't always realize what he means until it's too late. Perennial Harvest Main Office. That's where my mom works. What does she do? Science stuff. Is she involved in all of this? We just moved here. How could she be involved? True. Valentine Fertilizer Warehouse. Isn't that where you almost got snatched? Yeah. Why would Perennial Harvest have a tube going to the old Valentine place? This is starting to feel like something big. Can I go back up? No. <laughs> oh, I guess it didn't auto-save me checking this. Okay. That's a lot of buttons. Stand aside, Earthlings. I've read enough Hank Atomic to know my way around sci-fi tech. Eeny, meeny, miny. Rolla, what did you do? Nothing. I didn't even mow yet. What was that? Hide. Where? There's nothing but weird tubes down here. Just get back. Shit. Shit? Shit. Awesome. <laughs> you all need to come with me now. We're all, uh, we aren't going anywhere with you. Not until we get some answers. Mr. Underground Secrets. I told them it was an, abs an absurd, absurd password, but they love anything that makes me feel, makes them feel clever. They who. That's no matter. If I can keep you, um, you hidden until after the festival, I might be able to save your skins. We don't care about our skins. Hold on now, I like my skin. This all stops now, Nuncreed. Joseph waited for a moment in silence. You sound just like him. Who? Walt. You don't get to talk about my dad. You know your father and I were friends back before. All of this. That's a lie. It's true, I used to bounce on... Bounce you on my knee. What happened? Same thing that always happens. Reality, complications, and life. We were a team, Walt and I. An idealistic doctor and a bright-eyed pharmacist. Both hell-bent on helping folks. So you were his sidekick? No. We were partners. He helped his, uh, the patients and I... He helped the patients and I helped him. Yep, total sidekick. Luca, I need you to know this. I need someone who knows to know this. One day, Sharper Valentine comes to us. Says he's got an opportunity. He found something he didn't quite understand, and he was willing to pay us both handsomely to help him understand it. And my dad said no. Your father and I both believed in helping people, but the thing, the thing I could never get him to understand was it's a lot easier to help others if you help yourself now and then. Classic sidekick into villain plotline. Walt loved being righteous, almost more than he loved his family. He was wrong about one thing, though. When he begged me not to take Valentine's offer, he said, Joseph, if a person says yes one time to Sharper Valentine, he'll make sure they keep on saying yes to him until the day he's dead and gone. Sharper's long gone, but he's still got me saying yes. Is there a point to this sob story? Not really, no. Just an old man trying to delay what needs doing. I tried to keep you safe. I tried to keep you and Juniper out of this, but you forced my hand. What? You really don't know. My grand isn't isn't out of this. She's been scheming right under your nose. Juniper? Seems like she's planning to uh, on crashing the town's party. She's going to disrupt the festival? Why would she? How does she know? Apparently she knows a lot of things. What? Let's just say this isn't the only underground lair we've uh, busted into today. 
And honestly, here is way cooler. She's got maps and explosives and bad intentions, big man. You need to tell me what she's going to do right now. She doesn't understand what, uh, what it is she's messing with. I... Tell me now. She's in danger, boy. I don't know. She had a map with a mark on the fountain in the town square. The fountain? But why would... She knows about the source. What the heck is the source? If she tries to destroy the source, it could catalyze and... Dear God, she's going to freeze us all. <laughs> the ears! You all need to run. Run where? Away. As far as you can uh, from this town as you can get. Head west and don't look back. <laughs> that did not go how I expected. So we're totally following him, right? Totally. See you on the other side. You good? Yeah. I love this town. <laughs> Ah, oh, finally. <laughs> Allowing the suction to yank her into the dark. Dimness eclipsed around her like the shutter of a camera, as she seemed to cover great distance in mere moments. Her only points of reference were glints of upcoming turns, which approached with frightening speed. Only to carom her gracefully along, she heard the tinny, distant echoes of Roller's glee. Once she stopped fighting against it, the ride was impossibly smooth. Then, all of a sudden... Oh, whoa! I find it weird that that was from Beck's point of view and not Luca's. Interesting. That was intense. Yeah, I think I might I might have parted with some fluids in there. Any idea? What a weird way to word that you threw up. <laughs> Any idea where we are? Somewhere cold. Doesn't look like it um got uh got on any of us. It didn't feel like we traveled that far. So where it all go? This place sucks. Why would anyone even want to blow something up out uh, up out here? Only one way to find out, I suppose. We've got to catch up uh, to Nun Creed. I think he went this way. Wait, this is the town. Where's our house, though? Oh, wait! Did the bomb go off? And now this is the same town, but just like frozen over now. This looks familiar, yeah. Maybe we can clear off the snow. That doesn't explain where the whole ass house went, though! No time, Nuncreed's getting away. Wait, no, this is barred off now, though, too. This is starting to feel really familiar. Really? I may not be the most well-versed on all things Beacon Pines, but this does look like some sort of frozen replica of the town. <laughs> I'm me, he says. <laughs> ah, I got it. It's so obvious now. Mr. Nuncrete is an alien. Rollo, stick with me here. His species can only live in sub-zero temperatures. Oh boy, here we go. The source is their uh, base camp dimension, so naturally they keep it cold. We found it by traveling through those metallic wormholes back there. The final objective, kill us all and shapeshift into a Beacon Pine citizen of their choosing. You never really had me, but you very much lost me there. You get used to it, we should keep moving. Is this really a replica of the town? How did this happen? <laughs>
Juniper, I don't know what you think you're doing, but I assure you this is not going to solve anything. If you drop that, you've doomed the whole town. Oh, I wasn't... it wasn't me who doomed this town. I've been watching you, Joseph. I know what you've done. You and your co-conspirators. Gran, what's happening? Luca, you and your friends need to leave right this moment. Listen to your grandma, Luca. This is between me and Juniper. You've got it all wrong, Juniper. Just hand over that torch. You don't understand what you're doing. How could I possibly trust you to do the right thing? Walt told me everything. He trusted you, and you betrayed that trust. Luca, did you know that this man's entire life is a lie? If it weren't for him, your father might still be alive. That's not true. What was like a brother to me? We just had different ideas about how to affect how to affect change. Very convenient that your way just happened to line your pockets. Now that's not fair. Okay, only one option. <laughs> Stillness, he began to weep. It was all just too much falling to his knees. Luca whimpered softly. The tears crystallized as they hit the snow. Gran stared at Luca for a moment with warm sympathy, remembering why this was all necessary. This uh, this will all make sense soon, Luca. Then everything can go back to normal. I promise. You can't hide behind those people any longer, Joseph. Once their precious source is destroyed, we'll see where their loyalties fall. Juniper, don't. His knees buckled. <laughs> You see, Joseph, I've learned one very important lesson in life. If you want things to change, then you must be willing to... Alright, both copies of the town aren't safe. <laughs> In the back of my head, I was expecting it to turn into, like, a fire world or something. Okay, that's a good line. Okay. Uh, oh my god, that's a good illustration. Dude, the whole last game should have looked like this, I swear to god. <laughs> I love both art styles, honestly, but like that one just is way more expressive. Uh, looks like we have no choice but to finally do this, uh, this, uh, this section. Up with surprise as it struck true and taut. 
Wow, I can't believe that worked. Hey, Mr. Kerr, we'd love to hear your thoughts, but I'm afraid we have places to be. Come on, Iggy. See you, jerk. Fine, we know where that leads them. This way, we'll take the tunnels. Luca and Iggy winced as they sprinted through the thicket. The branches clawed at them, reluctant to give passage. After what felt like a marathon, Luca stopped in his tracks as they reached the clearing. What the? That was all he was able to say before Iggy slammed into his back. The boys tumbled down a steep decline and crashed with a wheezing thud on a surface as hard as ice. In fact, it was ice. Chapter 5. Signs. They stood silently, catching their breath. The sky was like sapphire. With each breath, a plume of steam escaped from Luca's lungs. Let's keep reading. Luca pulled Iggy to his feet. Oh, we're here again. Across a snowy terrain. <laughs> that was actually pretty badass. Uh, I think we've lost them. Are we up in the mountains? I don't think so. If anything, we're, we went downhill. Then what's up with the Winter Wonderland? All I know is there's no go, uh, going back the way we came. Let's see if we can get to uh, get our bearings. Follow me. Wait, so this is just like a wintry version of the town just through trees? Oh, look, are you there? Oh yeah, this plot point. It's that Bozo Kerr. I hope nothing bad has happened to you on the uh, out in the wood out in those woods. Hesitation. No need to be rude. Luca it seems like the only dangerous thing in the woods is you. He speaks, the young man of the hour. Now, how in tarnation did you end up with one of our radios? Just lucky, I guess. Boy, howdy, you Von Horns are full of surprises, aren't you? You knew my parents. I never had the honor of meeting your father, but your mom sure was a handful. We gotta keep moving. Oh, the Yellow Gods. What's the readout? Sitting just above 358 Kelvin. Or 258 Kelvin. That's down a bit from last time. Should we report to Mr. Kerr? Man, we're uh, still within safe ranges. It may be spreading, but it's under control for now. Even a small nudge in the equilibrium could cause a cascade. Dude, relax. Just a few more sights to hit before we can punch out. Let's get this over with. What's all this? Hard to say with all the snow. I think it's a town sign. It can almost make out the letters under there. What town could uh, this even be? There couldn't be another town this deep within the woods. I'm looking at evidence to the contrary. Let's figure out what we're dealing with here. Step one, snow's gotta go. I'll see what I can do. Just shake it, maybe? Okay! <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. We're in Beacon Pines. How is that possible? We ran away from town. How did we get back here? I guess we got turned around. Where did all the snow come from? Well, it's been colder than normal lately. That's pretty uh, big difference between sweater weather and this Arctic hellscape. The puddle we fought um, we fought at before. It was cold too. Maybe all of it led to one source. <laughs> you think it's related? What the hell is going on? We're going to get some answers. Let's keep moving. It's all frozen. Whatever happened here, it happened fast. The fish didn't have time to run. Or, you know, swim run. Everyone's gone. What? There's nothing here but more snow. There must be an explanation for all this. We have to keep looking. You can look all you want. I quit. What? Wait, Iggy, we have to keep going. 
You don't get it, do you? This isn't one of your pathetic Hake Atomic stories. We aren't going to save the day. We aren't even going to save ourselves. My face is mangled, the town is destroyed, and everyone we've ever known is gone. We don't know that. You can't just quit. Do whatever you want. I'm done. Iggy, it's going to be okay. Again, this feels out of character. <laughs> I guess the story just really needed them to separate for whatever reason at this point. It is getting pretty late, I think. Probably not a great idea to stumble around in the dark anyway. Let's just rest for a bit. You think they could at least, like, go inside a building for shelter? Wait, that, that window is smashed! We could finally go into Perennial Harvest! The way the snow covers ev covered everything over, it's kind of calming. Yeah. I haven't had time to say it, but thank you. For getting us away from those creeps. I sort of froze up back there. <laughs> hey, yeah, I should be the one apologizing. This all happened because I lost my temper. No, that's bull hockey. First of all, you didn't know what that gunk would do. You didn't- you didn't write. Of course not. And second, stop with this baloney about losing your temper. If I did lose my temper. Obviously. But that's exactly what you should have done. I was being a horse's ass. You were supposed to be the horse's ass in response. That's how it works. Iggy, I'm having a hard time following. You wanted me to fight you? Of course. Because you goody-goody uh, types take forever to understand this very basic point. Why would you go around saying cruel things trying to get into fights? It's something I do. You're an asshole because you're bored. Sometimes I just feel empty. You wouldn't understand. You and Rolo are always having a blast together, laughing and calling that dinky little treehouse mission control. Perfect little Luca Von Horn, with his perfect little life. My life is not perfect. Everyone in town likes you. Not everybody. Oh, that new girl hasn't even unpacked yet, and even she already likes you. You have Tish. I love Tish. Tish is great, but she ain't exactly the world's greatest co conversationalist, you know? I get that impression. It must be raining out here. Definitely. We should probably try to get some sleep. Yeah. Let's lay low for now. Tomorrow we'll get to the bottom of all of this. Luca? Yeah? I always did want to see the inside of your dinky little treehouse. What did you think? Not bad. I'll give you the full tour when we get back. You know what, huh? Luca could whisper before succumbing to sleep. Iggy snuggled in some more. When it comes to the worst days of my entire life, this one wasn't half bad. The house smelled of warm bread. Luca was playing with toy blocks on the living room rug. He looked up to see his parents on the couch. His mother held his father's head in her lap. She idly stroked his hair while humming a song. A voice behind Luca spoke. This is how you remember them, huh? Luca turned to see his own face. The doppelganger from his dreams. Still clad in a yellow hazmat suit. Still carrying a look of disdain behind empty eyes. Oh, look at this perfectly cozy scene. You know it wasn't really like this. The figure picked up a toy block and inspected it. It's amazing the facades that one can build given the right materials. Not that I blame us. These are a child's memories. All warm and fuzzy. You don't remember, do you? Luca snatched the block from the figure's yellow gloved hand. Remember what? The doppelganger pointed to the couch. The last day we saw him alive. The day he chose to abandon us. Luca turned to look at his father. Still lounging on the couch. That's not true. He didn't abandon us. The doppelganger waved his hand dismissively. Everything is true here. It's just a matter of what we choose to see. Well, let me show you. The world flickered and pulsed. Luca was sitting next to his bed, listening to his heartbeat with one of his dad's stethoscopes. 
The doppelganger limped into the room. Now, now, we both know that's not how this went. He grabbed Luca's hand and guided the stethoscope to the floor. Luca heard muffled shouting, brought close by the stethoscope. It was his parents, fighting. Do you remember what we did next? Luca gave a slow nod and crept down the hall to peek through the banister. He could see the outline of his mother at the bottom of the stairs. Damn it, Walt. We can't afford to get involved in this. She was scared. His father stepped forward. What am I supposed to do? Just watch? There's a sickness in this town, and we both know who's behind it. I swore an oath to help people. I won't turn my back on them. Luca's mother grabbed Walt. She was crying, pleading. I can't lose you. Walt calmly removed Eleanor's hand from his shoulder. What's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. I could never live with myself if I let Sharper get away with this. Eleanor raised her voice. Spare me your bullshit gratitude. <laughs> what about our son? Luca flinched, dropping the stethoscope down the stairs. Walt turned with a panicked smile. Luca, is that you, buddy? With tears in his eyes, Luca descended the stairs. Mom? Dad? What's going on? Walt dropped to a knee to meet Luca eye to eye. Nothing, buckaroo. Your mom and I just... Got a little overexcited is all. Luca placed the stethoscope against his father's chest. His heart was racing. It sounded like you were going somewhere. Walt gently removed the device from Luca's ears. Listen to me, Luca. I have some business to take care of. I'll be back in time to tuck you in. Luca hugged his father tightly. Promise? Walt stood up and walked to the door. He glanced over his shoulder. I promise. A wink and a grin. He put on his hat and strode out into the evening sun. Oh, whoa. A figure approached soundlessly from the foggy snowfall. Have we seen you before? I feel like we might have seen you just wearing something different. Lingering in contemplation, slowly raising one hand above Iggy, it snapped out two brisk raps on his head. From a deep slumber, Iggy sprang up defensively. Oh! Get your hands off me. Common presence or the recognition that he was not in danger. No, I think you're a new character. Lower. I, I like her design. <laughs> so what do you think you're doing? Gradually remembering his whereabouts. The figure exhaled a cloud of warm vapor. You two certainly have caused a lot of commotion. What's that supposed to mean? Take it easy, Iggy. We were asleep minding our own business. You're the one running around knocking on people's heads. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Iggy. You didn't hurt nobody. Anybody. Huh? Oh, I see. You think you're better than me. You... You big-hatted, scarfy-necked furball. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's lower the temperature a bit. Interesting choice of words. I mean, let's all just calm down. Who are you? A friend? An observer? I met your name. <laughs> a hitchhiker on the infinite expanse of possibility. <laughs> Great, how about a name? If you must call me something, you can call me Nat. How about you make a like a Nat and buzz off? Very well. Wait, do you live here? You might say that. So you know where we are. You might also say that. Look, pal, we just want to find a safe way out of here. Are you going to help us or not? Before knowing how to leave, one must know where they are. Alright, that does it. Look, I didn't know I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of here one way or another. Enough of the riddles. Iggy, wait up. Realizing he'd worn your patience then, Nat relented. Very well, I suppose this isn't the time for me metaphors. I'll show you how to get back home. Come here. Close your eyes. Slowly, then snapped his fingers. Oh, that's a guy. Okay. Oh. Okay, open them. Moments. Luca and Iggy let themselves believe that some great magic was about to unfold until they opened their eyes and found themselves in the exact same place. Oh my goodness. And disheartened. This is your home. This is Beacon Pines. Look, Nat, we know uh, we don't 
know how we got here. Maybe we stumbled through some time travel gate in Weepwoods, or we teleported to some alternative universe. Or this is all some cruel experiment by Kerr and his goons, but this is not our home. You're inching closer to the truth. Alas, the reality is much less fanciful. Just give us, give it to us straight. So be it. As I said, this is Beacon Pines, the original true Beacon Pines. Oh, that's powerful. <laughs> Technically finishing the mission. You both grew up here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, okay. At one point they said that, like, you know, the whole town was just ruined because of the bad fertilizer, so they, like, packed everyone up and let them stay in hotels for free while Kerr and his buddies, like, fixed the place up and then invited them back? And I guess maybe they invited them back to a different Beacon Pines, and this is the original one. That still begs the question, you telling me no one ever found this place before or no one knows about this? Or maybe they all do and they're just hiding it. So I guess maybe this is the ruined Beacon Pines that they're now restoring. But I guess, wh why is it covered in ice, though? Both the town you've called your home for the past several years, but the town you've called home your past several years is a replica. Okay, that makes more sense. A remarkable achievement of engineering, to be fair, but a replica nonetheless. That's impossible. It's too much work. You need a whole town to replicate a whole town. <laughs> Indeed, to pull off such a feat would require immense labor power. That which could be moved would be moved. Is that why there's a ton of clones? <laughs> that which that which could not would require a precise duplicate. We would have noticed. Someone would have noticed. You think so, unless the auditing was impeccable. A mind-numbing attention to detail. As for the innumerable trivialities which can uh, complete the tapestry, well, you can leave that to this miraculous thing we call a brain. It has a real aversion to discon uh, discontinuity, or revulsion even. The brain has a wonderful way of, so of smoothing out the rough edges, keeping us sane. Was that line not voice acted? So you're saying that someone made an entire new town and moved us all and no one noticed. Precisely. But why? Why is the one question that can never be answered with certainty? The best one can do is uncover. His eyes, his brow, and uttered... The source. Why'd you say the source like that? Why indeed? Uncomfortably. It's all ridiculous. There's no way they could. In his seat, his eyes darted back and forth in contemplation. But with a sudden pain, a thought struck him. If this is really home... Iggy, it's not too late to turn back. Simply head west through Weep Woods. Chapter six. The source. Nat expressed his sympathy with a shrug and sauntered off as unassumingly as he'd arrived. He'd given Luca and Iggy what they needed and nothing more. As Luca sprinted across the snow, the events of the past few days became clearer, pieces to a larger puzzle. Rollo said he was underground somewhere, captured. Mr. Kerr tried to cover it up with lies. The clipboards were hell-bent on capturing- Yeah, he didn't lie very well. <laughs> it all seemed I, thought, I think they're trying to capture both of us. But right now, there was one thing that Luca needed to know. Luca stopped dead in his tracks. The tree was gone. Uprooted and moved leaving a raw gash in the earth. He dropped to his knees and dug wildly at the cold snow. His numb hands hit something hard. A headstone. Oh, hold on a second. All right, dig it in snow. You're here. All this time I thought I was visiting you. But you've been here alone in the snow. Dad, I'm so sorry. They ruined your favorite spot in the world. Our favorite spot in the world. Dad, what do I do? Why? Just snow covered silence. 
Would you give me the slip like that? What if I co uh, couldn't find you, you jerk? Oh. Iggy, they... they stole his tree, Iggy. Yikes. They heard the crunch of approaching footsteps in the snow. We gotta hide. Okay, so it's probably Kurt. Nope, it's the yellow gods. 259 Kelvin. Fall off distance still good. Dude, did you hear me? I said 259. Sorry. You ever think about what we did here? We saved a whole town of people. Doesn't feel like it sometimes. What about everything we left behind? That's the grave of uh, some someone with a family. The people who love them will never know the truth. The truth is overrated. Hey, don't be such a downer, dude. We took this job to change the world. Yeah, come on. It's almost lunchtime. Hey, what the? Uh, weirdo. Do we know anyone who acts like that? How many people are in on this? <laughs> here, I thought I was a jerk. These dignuses are out here literally dancing on graves. I thought I was visiting him. I thought I was with him. He, I thought he was with me. Not gonna lie, that's a bad break. Here's some advice. Bonk. Hey. Who's any of this helping? What? Sitting here in the snow, crying like some pushover. Who are you helping? Iggy, look at what they did. They lied to everyone. Luca Von Horm, you're a lot of things, but you ain't no pushover. What did I tell you before? When some jerk comes at you, acting like the horse's ass, I should stand up for myself. Hell yeah. Kerr and his merry little band of clipboards pulled off the switcheroo for a reason, right? Nat mentioned something about a source. Whatever is at the source must be off awfully valuable to perennial harvest. Sure would be a shame if something unfortunate were to happen to their precious source, wouldn't it? Are we gonna freeze the town over this time? What do you have in mind? If it's small enough to steal, we snatch it. If it's too big to snatch, we smash it. And what if it's too big to smash? I like that exchange. <laughs> I'm always up for a challenge. I'm gonna make this right, Dad, I promise. Let's do this. Locate the source. Alrighty then. I think that'll be it for this episode. I'll see you folks later. Thanks for watching.